Welcome to Let's Talk Brock. Welcome everyone to this episode of the Let's Talk Brock podcast. My name is Alex. I'll be your host for today. Uh, today I'm joined by Claire Feinlater, who's a recent graduate of our Enology and Viticulture program. She's currently living and working in British Columbia. Claire was one of the first to partake in the first of its kind ice wine co-op with the Pilateria Estates Winery, which was the official wine partner of the Canadian Olympic team at the 2022 Winter Olympics in Beijing. Uh, today, she's here with us to share some of her experiences in one of Brock's most unique programs. So thank you very much for joining us today, Claire. Thank you, Alex. All right. So we'll just get right into it. Uh, right off the bat, what was it about Brock University that made you decide to attend here? Uh, well, I think the biggest thing is that it's actually the only degree program for enology and viticulture in Canada. Um, so unless I wanted to go internationally, um, it was kind of my only option, but I mean, not in a bad way. Um, I did a tour of the program uh, with the then academic advisor and, you know, kind of realized that it was the place for me. So, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, right on. Um, so speaking of the program itself, Enology and Viticulture, uh, it is a bit more of an unknown program, but I think is very unique to Brock University. So I figure a lot of high school students don't really know that this program exists. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about what kind of content that you learned in this program, um, what some of the classes that you take, and uh, overall, like what made this program so special? Yeah, definitely. Uh, so the program is a Bachelor of Science. Uh, so it focuses mainly on the science behind wine, if you will. And they structure it in a way that it does really expose you to all aspects of the industry. So the first year is a bit more of a general, you do the general science courses, basically those prerequisites that you need. And you do have an introduction to wines course, uh, which does a really good job of giving you a good overview of wine as a whole. There's a tasting component. So especially for those coming out of high school, you do have to be uh, over 18 uh, to be in the course. But for those coming out of high school, it really does give a good aspect and a good kind of overview of wine as a whole and exposes you to a lot of varietals that you might not be familiar with and just wine in general. Uh, then the second year you do move into the viticulture side of things. So grape growing, you learn about uh, biology of the grapevine and all those sorts of things. Then finally with third year, that's when you get into the wine making. So you're looking at the chemistry behind it, the science behind it, and you're taking uh, courses specific to that with throughout the whole way, you know, those general science courses, mm -hmm. you have your chemistries, your biologies. And then the fourth year, kind of the wrap up year, you're coming off of your last co-op where you've had exposure to a harvest. And then as well, you're doing your thesis. Um, there has been some changes to the program since when I took it in terms of the requirements, but for me, it was a thesis and you basically get to pick what you want to focus on. Of course, science-based, you can also go a more business route. Overall, the program is pretty flexible. Uh, of course, you know, it's science, but you do have lots of opportunities to make it your own and focus mm. in on kind of what you want to focus on. So which area to you then did you find most interesting, like the winemaking or the viticulture side of it all? Yeah, so I think that most people kind of go into it with winemaking as right. their kind of end goal. Obviously, a bit of a generalization. But for me, what I found, obviously, the winemaking was very interesting. That's kind of what I'm now focusing on. But <laughs> um, I found the viticulture actually to be very interesting. Um, not that I didn't think it wasn't going to be interesting. Right, yeah. Yeah. Um, it was very cool to kind of see, you know, and learn about the life cycle of the grapevine and focus in on that. And it really does give you a good foundation for winemaking in terms of, you know, why things happen the way that they happen, how to mitigate them, you know, in the vineyard during the growing season and all of that. Um, right. And I actually did end up doing my thesis in viticulture. So oh, very cool. Yeah. All right. So uh, as far as your co-ops go, what did your whole co-op process look like um, when it, you were finding your work terms? How was that process? Did you get a lot of support from Brock or did you just kind of go off on your own to find them yourselves? Um, so kind of a little bit of both, I guess. So for two of my work terms, I did do them at Pillatory States Winery. And then my mm -hmm. third work term, I did it at Liquidity Wines uh, out here in B.C. And with the co-op department, you do that in second year, you take that course and they do have a job postings board. Of course, like you kind of said from the beginning, you know, it's a bit of a niche 
niche program, niche industry. Um, so there were a handful of postings. Um, the Pillatory co-op that I got, they had come to Brock. Um, and actually, I wasn't able to attend the um, kind of event that they did in the gym. But one of my friends ended up going uh, and kind of helped me out that way. Um, so I guess kind of a little bit of both, it kind of depends, but, um, you know, everyone, especially in Canada, I mean, globally as well, but, um, they're really looking to support, you know, Brock students, especially in Ontario. Um, and they really want to, you know, bring in and foster kind of the new generation, if you will. So lots of support with Brock, but then also outside of Brock. Um, and there's just lots of positions. There's also um, Wine Jobs Canada is a really good resource as well. And right. basically with co-op, as long as you kind of talk with the department and keep them in the loop, you can kind of make any sort of job a co-op as long as you know you talk with co-op you talk with your sure. employer uh which is the nice thing and like i said with that flexibility as well you kind of do have a little bit of freedom with that um now i should say there are kind of you know needs that you have to fill you have to do a viticulture co-op you have to do a harvest co-op uh, but that can look very different with all the different jobs that are in the industry so yeah right um so on your co-op terms what did they have you do? Um, I know you did the one here in Niagara with the Pillatory Estates, and there was that obviously really cool collaboration with the Winter Olympics. Um, would you be able to speak a little bit to that and kind of what you did in that regards as well? Yeah, definitely. So my first co-op was my viticulture co-op. I did it with Pillatory, and I was in the vineyard doing all of those hand tasks. So pruning, thinning, cluster thinning, tucking, all that sort of thing. Uh, which was really, really cool to see hard work. Yeah, for sure. That is their <laughs> full time job. You know, if their machines at it, I was just trying to keep up the whole time. Uh, but work with a really good team and it was a very, very good experience, kind of a, a defining moment for me, I would say. And then from there, I had a little bit of a transition into retail in the off season, which was nice. So even though it was my viticulture co op, I got mm -hmm. to see that side of things. And then I kind of stayed on, not in a co-op basis, just kind of part-time in the fall. And then uh, I kind of was talking with Jamie, who handles uh, the co-op the co-op things over at Pillatory. And him and I were kind of going back and forth about doing an ice wine co-op. I had originally uh, wanted know that I wanted to do a lot of traveling and kind of had it in my head that maybe I would do, you know, a harvest in Australia or New Zealand kind of in oh, the yeah. winter semester because they are flipped. Uh, but of course, with, you know, good old COVID, that didn't happen. <laughs> I kind of already had it in my head that I was going to manipulate my degree a little bit in terms of the mm -hmm. timing. So I thought, you know what, why not, you know, still do something in this time period and do something super unique that not a lot of people get to do, uh, whether it be for co-op or just generally speaking. So, yeah, so I was there from January until April, but then as well uh, did the ice wine harvest, which was super cool. Um, and then, of course, you know, with them being an Olympic partner as well, uh, just a really neat partnership. And I think that that's something that, you know, why not have an official wine? Of course, um, yeah. <laughs> you might as well. Uh, and especially, you know, with Canada being, I think, known in a global spectrum for ice wine. And Pillatory is actually the world's largest state producer of ice wine. It just makes that partnership that much cooler, I think, to be able to, obviously, you know, they're serving their regular table wines, if you will, mm -hmm. uh, but bringing in an ice wine from some of the people that do it best in Canada, I think is a really cool and unique thing to kind of put on that global stage, if you will. Um, so yeah, yeah. So they're, doing some, they're doing some really cool stuff and it's been been cool to kind of see it firsthand. I was back there in the summer doing some retail work, so I've kind of haven't really left, but uh, yeah, no, they've, they've yeah. done yeah. great things for me, for the Olympics, all that sort of thing. Very cool. I have to say, uh, of all the programs here, I think that Enology and Viticulture definitely has the, the coolest co-op uh, work terms just because you know you're working with wine and I love wine so I think that's great yeah and then getting to travel you know then I came out here kind of to BC that was my little bit of you absolutely know, yeah nice travel if you will and finally got to do uh, a complete uh, harvest and it was just incredible I mean I'm back at the same place so yeah, of course. something so uh, since we're talking about uh, living out in BC, what was it that kind of brought you out there? Obviously, you're saying that, you know, you really wanted to travel a lot. But was there any particular about uh, the work term that you did uh, do out in British Columbia? So, yeah, so I actually got the work term, as I was kind of saying, there's lots of different avenues to do it. Uh, one of my friends who had also graduated, he had worked for 
um, the Von Mendel company. And so he was looking for someone. And so I said, sure, why not throw on my resume? Um, and it was kind of a bit of, a bit of chance that I actually ended up at liquidity. Um, but working with the winemaker there, uh, Amy Painter, she's incredible, uh, become what I like to kind of think of as a bit of a mentor for me. And especially, you know, in something so niche where, for me as well, I'm such a hands-on learner. So as much as I gain from the classroom, I'm gaining that much more from, you know, doing the repetition, doing it kind of day by day and getting to learn firsthand and, you know, problem solving uh, with each day, which I think is a big aspect to the job as well. So it was really cool. And like I said, I kind of wanted to travel with the degree. So with COVID, we kind of had to, you know, do a little bit of compromise, if you will. But it definitely was a compromise for the better. Yeah, for the very, oh, that's awesome. very glad that uh, that I came out here. So yeah, very good. Um, so as far as your experiences outside of the classroom and outside of your academics altogether, um, was there anything at Brock that really stood out to you? Any memories that you want to share? I think one one thing that stands out to me was um, in my first few years, obviously, before before COVID, mm-hmm. um, they typically hold every year a cuvee gala. So it's where wineries from all over come together and it's a, an award ceremony, but there's, you know, wine pouring and food pairings and Brock always offers up volunteer positions. Oh, and yeah. So I applied, uh, I applied to be uh, a wine pourer. So basically they put me with a winery and I got to talk with the winemaker who was there and That's basically awesome. pour wines and interact and all that sort of thing Um, and as someone in first year it was a really cool kind of first step into the industry Mm -hmm. for myself as well you know I don't have any family ties uh, to anything so it was really cool to kind of have that first little kind of foot in the door and see what you know everything uh, encompasses in terms of the industry Uh, and then as well actually um, this past summer in my last term there was uh, the cool climate wine symposium that Brock did yes I remember that Yeah. So once again, you know, a super cool event bringing people from, you know, kind of all over uh, who make wine and are, uh, you know, impacted by wine. And, you know, once again, I volunteered with that and I was actually pouring for one of the Chardonnay events that they did. Uh, So I think those are kind of really good avenues and kind of really good outside the classroom activities, of course, still affiliated with Brock, uh, but really cool things that, uh, you know, I did that people can do to kind of once again, kind of get your foot in a certain door and just kind of see, you never know who you're going to meet, but also just, you know, what you're going to be exposed to and hearing different people's perspectives and different talks and all that sort of things. Yeah, for sure. No, that's that's awesome, honestly. Um, so my last question, if you could go back in time to when you were applying to university, uh, what would you give uh, first year you, what advice would you give to first year you um, or any other tips that you would give to any future enology and viticulture students? Oh gosh. Um, I think, I think the biggest thing would kind of be that little bit of cliche, you know, trust the process. Everything happens for a reason, you know, Mm -hmm. especially with this niche program, as we've kind of been saying, it's one of those that, you know, most people, they don't know a lot about wine or even just, you know, going into university in general. It's a bit of a shot in the dark, you know, you're 18 and you're thinking, you know what, I think I want to do this for the rest of my life. Um, And, you know, it, it works out, but sometimes it doesn't. And I think the biggest thing is just kind of, you never know what experience is going to lead to another experience and, you know, what you're going to be exposed to uh so i think just kind of jump in for the ride and i think one thing for programs specifically is you know you, you got to get through the sciences they're, they're <laughs> hard but you know you get through gotta them do. yeah you, you you know get that pat on the back and it is, a, <laughs> it is an aspect of pride but it's it's tough so yeah kudos to anyone who's in it anyone who's gonna do it um but you you got this it, it'll be okay i promise <laughs> just power through and you'll be good to go exactly, yeah. yeah right on well thank you very much for joining us today uh for taking the time uh, i know there's a bit of a time difference so obviously for waking up a little bit earlier today i do very much appreciate that um Uh, Thank you, everyone else, for listening to this episode, and uh, we hope to see you next time on the Let's Talk Brock podcast. Thanks for joining us. If you have any questions, you can contact us at brocku.ca slash discover slash contact.